Hello and welcome everybody. Today I'm gonna again you know, touch up on the subject of slavery but in another aspect and we're gonna see how Muslim people see the slavery in the Islam and how what they say about it. First let's listen to Yasser Qadi answer uh, the question why Islam you know, allowed slavery. Uh, for Dr. Yasser. Why did Islam not completely prohibit slavery? Um, there, there were incentives for the Muslims to free slaves, but is it surprising that Islam did not completely prohibit it but still allowed it? Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah. So this is a question that a lot of times Muslims get asked by non-Muslims. Uh, why is it that your religion hasn't come and uh, prohibited slavery? You guys talk about the emancipation of women, you guys talk about human rights and values and Islam did this and that. Why didn't it come and stop slavery and just uh, abolish it? Uh, I think the response is, is quite simple. We tend to overcomplicate that which is simple. The response is that Islam provided the mechanisms and allowed for uh, the complete abolishment of slavery, but Islam came down at a time and place where slavery was all over the world, and it could not revolutionize this particular issue. Every society on the face of the earth at that time had slaves. What Islam came, it came and it regulated slavery. And the first thing that did it. So this guy, you know, think and think, and he come up with a very genius answer. He said the answer is very simple, but we, because we are simple-minded, uh, we cannot understand, you know, how they think. First, Mr. Yasser Qadi, you're talking about God, Allah, creation, creator of the universe, who not allowed the Muslim to drink, you know, our society drink, why he stopped people drinking, he, he stopped uh, khinzir, pig, pigs, why he did do that? Why instead of uh, he allowed marrying children and he didn't condemn them? So it is easy one verse to tell them we stop slavery is easy. But he we have uh, about 16 verses talking about wama malakat aymanukum and slavery. These people ex explain the Islam position on slavery with what they repeat and repeat without bored, you know, without getting bored. Because they have the idea that the Islam was not revealed for the sake of one era and that the Quran was not revealed to suit a specific time, rather they were revealed to the all humanity. It prohibited uh, the capture of an innocent person and making him a slave. The second thing it did, it gave a number of incentives to free slaves. One of the greatest acts of worship is to free a slave. The third thing that it did is that it provided a number of expiations. If you've done a penalty, if you've uh, promised God you're going to do something, then you didn't do it, then one of the uh, ways that you get rid of that, one of your, your, your uh, ways to, to absolve yourself of the sin is to free a slave. So, it so he's saying that the Islam, you know, encourage people to to free slave but but if you make a, a a sin you 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 can free a slave but he's you know he's not mentioning that all the verses that uh, refer to this one you have other option you can fast two months together or or you can give a zakat or money or food for 60 people. So it's not just, uh, you can choose if you are a young man and you have the power to fast, why you should, uh, you know, why you should spend money and buy slave to, to free a slave rather than you can fast for two months and you have it. Slave is an option down there because if there is no slave, and again, this one is can it can it can be against him, you know. This uh, this question, this answer he give is again against him because by putting this law down there, the people have to have the you know you, we have to have the the place where they sell people. So I can buy one, and I can fulfill my uh, my my uh, duty to the Islam. You know, th that's why my first. Uh, uh, answer to this guy by 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 allowing you know for slavery in Islam is is permitted the uh, uh, permitted the owner to enjoy the slave female girls and to be comfortable with her in the bed, which call rape and violence and nothing uh, uh, beside that.
free a slave. So it restricted how slaves can, and of course the fourth one I forgot, it uh, basically humanized the treatment of slaves. Slave, th th there's only one way to get slaves in classical Islamic. He said it humanized uh, the treatment of the slave. I don't know how, but I, if you guys don't uh, understand how the slaves have been treated in Islam, you can refer to my video about uh, Omar beating wife and to see that the slaves are not allowed to wear full clothes, you know, they are just topless and uh, the hair is uncovered, the chest is uncovered, uh, her nipple have to be shown, there is no human treatment. Uh, you can you can have a donkey and you can uh, give him food and and you give him shower every day but your donkey you know gonna to wake up to him at middle night and uh, and do something to him but the wife is there to, to uh, the slaves there to do anything for you to work in the house all day and when you come in at the night you're gonna rape her again and again and again and when you finish you can sell her again it's like uh, like any other animal you can sell in the in the market i don't know why this guy talking about that is prisoners of war who cannot be uh, freed or ransomed oh, instead of executing the them instead of there's war. only one way to get slaves in classical islamic fiqh that is prisoners of war who cannot be basically humanized the treatment of slaves slave th there's only one way to get slaves in classical islamic fiqh that is prisoners of war that's simply not true. That is simply not true. There is many ways to get slaves. The first, you can buy them. The second, you can get them from uh, from uh, from the market, uh, from the war, as uh, spoils. And the second uh, the, is in the Sunnah, as when the uh, Maria Al-Qibtiya gifted from uh, from Al Muqawqas, the king of Egypt that time, is a, as a gift. So I don't know why this guy talking about there is one way, there is three way to get the slaves. And today I'm gonna touch up on the on the the first and the famous one by war. And I'm gonna def uh, show you this guy is a liar when he said only captive wars. Treatment of slaves. Slave. Th there's only one way to get slaves in classical Islamic fiqh. That is prisoners of war who cannot be uh, freed or ransomed. Instead of executing them, instead of doing anything harmful to them, the only uh, option that was humane at the time was to incorporate them into society and allow them to be slaves and then give them a million and one incentives to free those slaves. The so let's see what's, uh, what, let's finish what he was The say. main point here is quite simple. Islam did not... Uh, okay. So this, he said, there is one way to get the slaves and um, by by capturing them, and because we're not gonna kill them, we're gonna use them as a slave. Okay, let's go. I go. So, Mr. Qadi, let's see now if there is, like you said, one way of getting slaves in the Islam. So let's let's look for one main one is the getting one from the war. But first, let's show you the Ali how when he died, how many he have. First, in the Bidaya wa Nihaya, al Bidaya wa Nihaya, juz sabi' dika zawjati hi wa bana. The, the English uh, translation said Ali had many children, other are mothers and various children. He died on behalf of four women and 19 co concubines. My God be pleased with him. So just Ali and they say he is the least one having uh, slaves and he have 19, 19 concubines and four wives. كتاب مصنف بن أبي شيبة كتاب في الحديث حديث عن عن حديث أبو سفيان الحمري قال حدثنا خالد بن محمد القشي قال قال عبد الله بن عمر من أراد أن يتخذ جارية التلبد في التقيها الرابعية ومن أراد أن يتخذ عليه في التقيها الفاسية ومن أراد أن يتخذ عليه في التقيها الرومية. This one is in the مصنف بشيبة the book of the women. Abdul Malik Ibn Marwan said, Who wants to take a maid or a slave woman for pleasure, take her a barbarism or berba, and whoever desire to take her for the child, let her, let her be Persian, and whoever wants to take her for service, let them take her a Roman or Romanian Roman that time yeah this um, and the number of the slaves increase until it become in the tent during the 
during the, the reign of the first Khalifa, I think uh, Umayyah, when they were Bani Umayyah in the, in the Khilafah. And then uh, in, in the hundreds, uh, we're talking about what people there was in the palace, you know, the guy who was, uh, who was Khalifa. There was a hundred in the reign of Yazid bin Abdul Malik, and then by thousands during the reign of Abbas uh, Khalifa. You know, Abbasiyah Khalifa, Khalifa al Abbasiyah, until the number reached 4,000 concubines, as we mentioned, there is one hadith in all that Al Mutawakkil, you know, hadith the Al Mutawakkil who intercourse with the 14, uh, 40,000 of them, 4,000 4, of them during uh, his uh, Khalifa, which lasted about a quarter, a quarter century. Uh, it is a record number in what we believe. And the reader, reader can find you can guys find more talk about this uh, subject. I'm gonna refer to you guys some uh, books. They talking about slaves and how to treat them and they where they doing and what they doing with them and everything. In these books, Al Asfahani, Wafi Fi Akbar Nisa, Women uh, News. They have a book and Al Aghani li Ibn Al Qayyim Al Jawziya, the singing for Ibn Al Qayyim Al Jawziya, and Tawq Al Hamam, Tawq li Ibn Hazm, Wal Imta, Wal Mu'anasa, li Ibn Hayyan Al Tawhidi. And uh, we're gonna refer here to one source where it's uh, coming the slavery and how it began. Now we're gonna see what Uqba ibn Nafi' and to see how if there is when Islam starts conquering the. Yeah. Kitab Nihayat al Adab fi Funun. Nihayat al Arab fi Funun al Adab. This guy name is uh, An Nuwayri. Yeah. And Agani in the Art of Literature. Part 24. I think I'm gonna start with the page 27. I'm gonna read the story of Abu Uqba uh, ibn Nafi' and I'm gonna translate what happened to you guys to see what exactly happened with him and why he going there and for what reason he was conquering. We start from Warahala Hatta Nazalata Heart. So and where is said Ibn Uqba went to Taharat. Taharat is a place in Algeria in here and because he was here in the Karawan and he went to Taharat he left somebody there and he is in the second reign of his uh, second reign of his time because he was first time coming there and he get uh, taken out by Marwan I think Ibn al-Hakam and then he come back again and this time going to conquest to conquest. He say he warahala hatta nazala ta heart. Falamma balaga roma habara. He say he 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 went he went until he come to Taharat when his news reached the Roman they sought help from the Berba and they answered them and they support them so basically Roman hear about him and they send the letter to Berba and Berba come in to help them against uh, Uqba so Uqba ibn Nafi when he heard it he make a ceremony among his uh, his army and people and inside them to fight and they meet the Roman and the Berba did not have the energy to fight them so he killed them miserably and kick out the Roman from his city or from the city from Taharat I think yeah then he left to Tonji he there is meet a man a Roman man called Elian he was a honorable man in his people. He gave him a good gift and his kindness and came down to his judgment. He said, it is preserved, not safe. So he's clearly one, like they want to tell us here, he want to cross to the Andalus or uh, at that time wasn't Andalus, was Spain. And he want to cross there, I think. And he, the guy told him it's not safe to cross. So he want to go to the south. He said, show me the man of the Berba and the Romans. He said, you have left the Roman behind. You have uh, nothing but the Berba and their knights. I mean, for people who fight uh, in a number of only God Almighty knows. He said, 
So basically what he's saying here, he said they are the decent descendant of the Berba and their knights. You know, they are people who fight. Uqba said, where are located? Where are they? He said, in the lower Sus. Uh, yeah, they said they are the descendants of the Berba and the knight. Uqba said, where well, they are said in the lower Sus, they are people who have no religion. He said people have no religion, but at ta that time Berba have religion. They have Christian, most of them Christian at Jew that time. Who eat the dead meat? I don't think Berba that time eat dead meat, but the Muslim that time used to eat dead meat of people. No, no. And they drink the blood of their livestock. <laughs> you see, they depicting us like a, like some uh, some monstrous people and. And they eat the dead meat and they drink the blood of their livestock and they are like a beast, you know, like a beast. And they are disbelieving God and don't know him. And Uqba said to his companion, we live upon the blessing of God. So Uqba are going to conquer the, the Sus al Adna or well, like we, we call now all around from, from Marrakesh up to, up to Fez, Meknes and the, the area. So let's see what's gonna happen. This is the, the, the Islam because I don't think that time now Islam is say when we go fight we we present to people are you gonna go to the Islam go to Islam or pay jizya or uh, or have a fight. But this one here, there is no fight, there is no call for any call for something. They are, because we, that time we call like, they think like we are beasts, we are not like uh, Ahl Kitab. So we are allowed to kill them straight away without even like giving them chance to, to choose. What he say here, he traveled from Tanji to the upper Sus in the south of Tanji. Well, upper Sus is not in the south of Tanji, it's between them like two miles to like 200 or 300 miles. So which called the Taru Tarudant? Yeah, Tarudant is far away, far away from, from Tanja. And he ended up with the first of them. So he killed them miserably and, and those who remain escape and his horses dispress in their request. You know, they go look for them after. Even they run away and they go after them. And he, he end up the story here. So here to say the reason why they go in down there for fight, it's not because uh, they want to spread the word of God or anything else. So he said here, and Zeus. I think in that time Lower Sus was uh, was around that Meknes area, you know, and Khuribga and uh, all because I am from Morocco, so I know the area very well. So because if he come in from Tanja, he will go to Rabba and uh, the low, you know, low low level of sea level, and there is no mountain down there. So that's that's why how he gonna cross from. He said here, and he went to the lower Sus. So the Berba gather in a large number that only Almighty could count them. So he found, so he found, yeah, la yusihim illallah. So he found them with a fight like hadn't been never heard. So he said he fight them with a fight like no one heard this fight before. It's a big fight and he have been heard before and he killed a lot of them. They say he killed a lot of them and then capture women like they had never seen before. These people never see women before. They capture women like never seen before and it was said and this is the way he said is in his book and this hadith is sahih a slave girl was worth a thousand shekel in the east now shekels i think that umla at that time was like like money at that time more or less then he kept going until he reached the atlantic ocean and no one could defeat him or stand up to him and he is the uh, until the water reached his gum of horse you know, until he reached the 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 water and the end that's why he stopped you know if he wasn't for the water he said he could go and go and go he like he he said he was 
حتى بلغ البحر المطي في ذا فعد لا يقوم له فحتى وقع لبان فرسيه لبان فرسيه is the, the horse no the horse mouth you know until the water reach his near his mouth ورفع يعد السماء وقال يعني يسأي حتى أبلغ إلى ملك ذي القرنين I think here here he say No, he raised his hand in the sky and said, "Lord, had it not been for this uh, sea, I would have gone in the ca country to the king of Dulcarnain, defeating, uh, defending your religion and fighting those who disbelieve in you and uh, serve uh, someone else." Here is clearly, uh, clearly Abu Uqba referring to to Alexander. So Alexander in the Quran say he is Dhul uh, Qarnain and he said he was a king Salih and I don't think uh, he was uh, he's, uh, he was he was not Salih man <laughs> by the Islamic term you know he was a gay person so uh, and he was in the but in the story here in uh, in Muslim he said Malikun Salih and he's like a prophet here in the in the Quran Dhul Qarnain We come here again another source Al Bidaya wa Nihaya a Juz Tasi Musa ibn An Nusair or Abd al Rahman al Lahmi. كثيراً. So you people gonna say the Muslims going for only capture uh, the war fighters people no. Can you believe that? He said here, and this is Musa bin Nusayr has an opinion and management and uh, fire uh, firmness and, and experience in the war. Al Al Baghawi said uh, he they be, he become a ruler. Uh, Musa bin Nusayr become a ruler of the country of Africa in the year of 79. Yeah, 79 he opened the uh, he opened very many countries various many countries cities and region other created as a great deal and gain a lot of money uh, and abundance of uh, gold and uh, precious jewels and uh, something that could not be counted and counted again and so and, uh, and uh, as for uh, machines and goods animals And animals, they are something that does not uh, know what they are and capture from them good uh, boys. They capture a lot of stuff and thing and even good boys. They're talking here, uh, the Ghilman, whom uh, Ghilman is the boys, uh, young children. They use them as well for sex. You, young boys and the beautiful women, a lot of them, until it's said that no one like him has taken from the enemy and uh, the people of Morocco become Muslims on his hand and spread the religion in the Qur and the Quran in them spread it on them you know the betha fi him is not like uh, he teach them he's betha by by power and if he walk to a place to carry money with him on the calf because uh, he carry money in the calf you know ajala and, uh, and place put money big ones and uh, because they said because it was too much and the, the animals were unable to do so they they cannot put it in the animals so they put uh, Ajala, you know, Ajala, and uh, put money there and uh, and take it to the the east. The exodus of uh, Kalisa and the killing of Aqba ibn Nafi.
say here Casilla was uh, one, was one of the Berber leaders and he had uh, converted to Islam lately uh, in the state of when Abu al Muhajir was uh, was in the control after Uqba coming and his uh, Islam he did say was good when Uqba came so Abu al Muhajir introduced him to to him introduce uh, Casilla to Uqba him and let him knows Casilla greatness in the Berba and their submission to him they told him this is a big guy in the Berba and the Berba respect him and you should you too as well give him you know some respect Uqba did not pay any attention and uh, underestimate and insult him Uqba insult him and one of his insult to him was that he brought a sheep you know brought him in a sheep and order to be slaughtered ordered them to be slaughtered and he ordered Casilla to skin a sheep for him he told Casilla Casilla get up and skin a, sh a sheep for me Casilla said God bless the prince these are my boys and my servant they can do the job for me then Uqba insults him in front of everybody and order him to get up and get uh, but when he gets up he get angry and slaughter the sheep and he began to wipe his beard with the blood on his hand he start to wipe his beard with the blood and the Arab pass by him and say to him oh barbarian oh barbarian what are you doing uh, he said this is good for her but until an Arab sheikh, it's a big guy, you know, like he knows something, pass by by him and say, No, the barbarian is promising you revenge. Abu al Muhajir said to Uqba, then Abu al Muhajir said to Uqba, I think Abu al Muhajir that time was in the prison, but how he said to Uqba, but anyway, Abu al Muhajir said to Uqba, What have you done? You came to a mighty man in his people and in the house of the glory, and his house of glory, and he was no longer ago uh, you know polytheism and you corrupted his heart i see that you have to make an agreement with him because i fear for you that it might be a little mistake so what does he say him he tell him you have to agree with him maybe he gonna kill you uh, he was in the prison but he was uh, let's translate this uh, this a bit to people then he neglected him and when Casilla saw the, the Romans when Casilla saw the Romans were uh, they sent him a letter he saw the opportunity and he jumped up and stood this uh, he among his uh, uncle's sons and his family and who joined him from the Romans and who joined them then Abu al Muhajid then said to Uqba take him now take him now before he gets stronger Abu al-Muhajir with all of his, his companion to of Uqba and he is in the prison by him uh, Uqba army march to the Kasila and Kasila avoid him the Berber said to him so basically here the uh, Kasila uh, gather up an army I think it was 5,000 6,000 that time and they were to fight but Kasila avoid him he don't want to fight him I think he was blocking he was blocking his way to the to the east and uh, he wants him to go to Africa and that place was in the in the top in the sea so the Roman can meet them there and uh, the Berber can hit them from the back that's what exactly they say so basically the guy was in the prison and help, helping uh, uh, Uqba 
and Uqba army march to to Kasila and Kasila avoid him. Kasila avoid him, and the Berber said to to Kasila, when Kasila don't want to fight him, the Berber uh, like his people asking him, why you avoid him? Why you stepping back when he are in uh, five? When we are in five thousand? I think they were at five thousand that time. He said to the, his men, we are increasing every day, and he is decreasing. And he has no help if he ask for Africa I will march for him I think he when he said he when he asked for Africa let's see the Kharita here he was here fighting here because this is the first Ma'araka and his second here when he going back from here he go to Tahudas here and here they was he said if he go to Africa I will march for him so he gonna go behind him but Kasila was here somewhere was here so if he marched f here Kasila will follow him in the back and the Roman that time was in the front of him so he have no escape but if he go here he never gonna go here because he going to die because there is no help coming from this side it's only help coming gonna come from this side and Kasila already was uh, you know was cutting this this way to him to go so as for Abu al-Muhajir, he was released by Uqba. But uh, for the Muhajir and Abu al-Muhajir, the guy who was in the, problem, uh, the prison, he said a poetry, uh, cannot translate it here, but he said he was pointing about fighting al khayl and the, the horses and think about that. When Uqba hear this, uh, this poet by At-Taqfi, uh, Abi Majn At-Taqfi, he released uh, Abu al-Muhajir from, from the prison uh, and he released him and uh, he told him uh, you join the Muslim uh, do their affair and I will gain martyrdom. you know I will get shahada and you know, I will die for God Abu al-Muhajir said I gain what you gain with you Uqba pray and broke the stilt of his uh, sword and then he broke what the soul used to protect the sword that thing he protected they broke it and go either they gonna kill or die you know kill or get killed and Abu al-Muhajir did as he did and the Muslim broke their stilt and their sword and the Uqba command his people to get off their horse and they did and fought them hard then the enemy multiplied and they were killed on the last one last one of them and no one of them escaped thank you guys for watching and see you again